So I prophesied as the Lord commanded me, and, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones approached each one of its one to its joy. And as I looked, sinews and flesh grew upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then the Lord said to me, Prophecy to the wind, prophecy, son of man, and say to the spirit, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O spirit, and breathe upon these dead men, and let them live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the spirit entered into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great multitude. And the Lord said to me, Son of man, these bones are whole, else of Israel. And they say, Our bones are dried up, our hope is perished. We are clean cut off, therefore prophecy. And say to them, Thus say the Lord God, Behold, I will open your tombs, and I will raise you from your tombs, O my people. And I will bring you home into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves and have raised you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will fix you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, says the Lord. The former trees whose cover names of the alphabet of all the tutors began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he threw the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. By many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, and then urged them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which they of me, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, as ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of is to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put to his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon me. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return they into Jerusalem from the mouth called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were coming, they went up into the upper room. 
Where are both, both Peter and James and John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, Zealotus, and Judas, the brother of James? These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about a hundred and twenty. Then, brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was gone to them that took David. For he was not numbered with us and had obtained part of his ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bells rushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers of Jerusalem, and so much as that field is called in the proper tongue a Sodoma, that is to say, the field of God. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. And his fish are, fish are brick, let another take. Wherefore, of, the, of these men which have been accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us. Must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection? And they appointed to Joseph Bar Barsabbas, who was surnamed Joseph, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and they lost out upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it fell on the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation of heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in the language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which be the Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Magus and Jalalites, and the dwellers of Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Syria, and strangers and Jews and proselytes, Greeks and, Arabi and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were now saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, 
and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, the man of truth of God among you, by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, he hath taken and by wicked hands hath crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the way of life. Thou shalt make me full of thy joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith, saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and the promises unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify in his Lord, saying, Save yourselves from this un for a generation. Then they gladly received his word, were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three hundred souls, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together, and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the, all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked the alms, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, but immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered the, then into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. 
And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as a lame man was healed of Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them. In the porch that is called Solomon, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk, the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One, and the just and desire of murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance he did it, as did also your rulers, that those things which God before had showed by the mouths of all the, his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. I repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And when the times of depression shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until God until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, The prophets shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets, and from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets, and the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, and turning away every one of you to his iniquities. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now even time. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about five thousand. And it came to pass on the morrow that the, their rulers and elders and scribes and on us the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power, or by what name, have ye done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people, and elders of Israel, we this day be examined of the good deeds done to the innocent man. Why, what means he is made whole, be it known unto you, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God hath raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among them whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took the knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus, and beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle happened then by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it, but that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, 
and they speak henceforth to no man in his name, and they call them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, yet he, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorified God for that which was done. For the man which was about forty years old, on whom this miracle of healing was shown, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that to the chief priests and elders and said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine many things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ, for of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together, for to use whatever thy hand and thy counsel determined before it to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that they may speak thy word. So stretching forth thine hand to heal, and thy signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that of the things which he possessed of his own. But they had all things common, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands and houses sold them, and brought the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribute, distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. But a certain man named Nias, with Sophia his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hast Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young man arose, wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after that, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. And she fell down straight away to his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And young men came in, and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And the rest, there is no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them, and believers were more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they had brought forth the sick into the streets, and laid them on the beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing might overcome. Shadow some of them, 
There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folk, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. And the high priest rose up, and all that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. The high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and the senate of the children of Israel, and sent the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found, and shut all safety, and the keepers standing without before the door. But when he had opened, he found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them, whereunto this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain and the officers and brought them without violence, but they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they brought them, they set for them the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, and we are his witness of these things. And so is also the Holy Spirit, whom God hath given them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then they stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had a reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth in his face, and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourself what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up to the to this boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about four hundred were themselves, who were slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up, Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone, for if this counsel or this work be of men, they will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach, preach, preach Jesus Christ. And in those days, when a number of the disciples had multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Thracians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them, and said, Is it not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables? Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, and the saying please the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and 
Nikolai, Bob, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, and Proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. When they prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. A great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the living time, the Syrians and the Alexandrians. And of them was Cilicia, and of Asia, including Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they formed men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and taught him and brought him to the council and set up false witness which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say, and if this is that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the custom which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Ephraimia. Before he dwelt in Haran, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land, the Shavuans, and dwelt in Haran, and from the in front fence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land, wherein he now dwell. <coughs> And gave them the inheritance in it. No, not so much as to set his foot on. But he promised that he would give it to him for a procession and to his seed after him when as yet he had no child. And God spake on the wise that his seed should sojourn in the strange land, and that they should bring him into bondage and entreat them evil four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that they shall come forth and serve thee in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and so Abraham begat Isaac, and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarch moved to the Endies, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. And he delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sights of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dirt over all the land of Egypt and Canaan, and great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard there was born in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. And then sent Joseph and called his and then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred three score and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died and our fathers, and when and were carried over into Shechem, and were laid in the sepulcher of Abraham, brought for the sum of money of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shemem. And when the time of promise grew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil and treated our fathers, so that they cast up their young children to the end that they might not live. In which time Moses was born, and was exceeding fair, and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him, and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in the words and deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came unto his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that he was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. 
And the next day he showed himself unto them as he strove, and would have yet set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me, as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then for Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begot two sons. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of the fire and a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and he drew near to behold it. The voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled, and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou art standest is holy ground. I have seen thee, I have seen the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and have come down to deliver them, and now come, and I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out. After that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt, and in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses, which said to the children of Israel, A prophet shall be the Lord. Your God rise up unto you for all of your brethren, like unto me. Whom shall ye hear? This is he that was in the church in the wilderness, with the angel which spake to him, in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers did not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt, saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us, for as for, as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. And ye, house of Israel, have ye offended, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your God rent not them, figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Joshua into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house, howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is this place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in the heart, and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it? When they heard these things, they were cut to their heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep.
and Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial, and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he saw he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and tearing men and women committed them to prison. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Paul Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, hearing with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy, and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard to cut his glass a long time, he had bewitched them with sorcery. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of the Jesus of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered beholding the mysteries and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that he was laying on, one, on the of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay my hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought, thought that the gifts of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast made a farce no loss in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this of thy wickedness, and pray, God, that perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the fall of bitterness, and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold the man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man to guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was set. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb down before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and he shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip, and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet, and himself, or of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached to 
much against Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What says him to me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caused the bread. Philip, as the eunuch, saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was far found as a dotist. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. <coughs> And so he had me up written and slaughtered against the disciples of the Lord, warned them to the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, and if any, if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, that he might bring them down unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and some letters like shined round about him, a light from heaven. And he fell upon the earth, and heard a voice saying, saying unto him, so, so, what do you pers why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard to take against the pricks. And he trembled, and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men, and the men which journeyed with him, Stood speechless, hearing a voice, but not seeing a man, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And when he was there three days without, and he was there three days without sight, and neither did he eat or, nor drink. And there was a certain disciple in the, at Damascus, and Ananias, and said unto him. He, and, he, and to him he said, The Lord in the vision of our eyes. And he said, Behold, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go, go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire the house of Judas, for a one called Saul, of Tar Tarsus. For behold, he prays, and hath seen a vision, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard of many, heard by many of this man, how much evil he hath done to thy saints in Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on the name, call on the name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name unto to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how to make great things, for I will show him how great things he must he must suffer for my name's sake. And then the man went on his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way that thou comest, came has sent me. That thou might that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes as if it had been scales, and he received the sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then Saul was Saul certain days with the disciple. Then was Saul certain days with the disciple, which were at Damascus. Well, straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is this not he that destroyed them which called upon this which called on this name in Jerusalem? And came hither for that interest that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests. But Saul increased the more in strength, and confounded the Jews which dwelt in Damascus, proving that this is the very Christ. And after many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him.
The day of laying wait was known, was known to Saul. They watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night, led him down by the, by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he saved to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, and that he had spoken to them, and how he had preached loudly at Damascus in the, in the name of Jesus. And he was with them, coming in and going out of Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus, and disputed against the Grecians. But they went about to, but they went about to slay him, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea, and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches, then had the churches rest throughout all of day in Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, and they were multiplied. And it came to pass, as Peter passed through all quarters, he came down to, to the saints which dwelt in Lydia, and there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. For Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole, arise and make thy bed, and he rose immediately. And all the dwelt in Lydia, and Sharon saw him, and turned to the Lord. Now there was a Joppa, a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Lurkus. This woman was full of good works and, and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. And when they had washed and laid her in an upper chamber, and for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent him unto two men, desiring that he would not be to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping, showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth, and kneeled down and prayed, and turning and turning them to the Bible, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And when he gave her, and when he gave her his hand, he lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and the widows, he presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa, with one Simon, a tanner, with a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God, with all those people, which gave much alms to the people, and prayed to God always. He saw the vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him, and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked upon him, he was afraid, and said, What is this, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come for a morrow before God. Now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, the surname is Peter, who lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou art to do. And when the angel spake us, Cornelius departed, he called two of his household servants. And a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa on the morrow on their, on their journey and drew up nigh to the city. Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he came very hungry and would have eaten. But while they had made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open. And a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheep net at the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. 
and the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that called out from him. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while well, Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. For Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he who ye seek. What is the cause? Wherefore are ye? Wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house, and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in, and lodged them, and on the morrow Peter went away with them, and a certain brethren from Joppa accompanied them. And the morrow after the, they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and friends, and Peter was coming in. Cornelius met him, and fell down at his feet, and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man, and as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together, and he said unto them, Ye know how that is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew, keep company, or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without Game saying, As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent he had sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thy alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter, who is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God, hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Truth I perceive thee. God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say, you know, which was published throughout all of Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him, and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up a third day and showed him openly, not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is which he was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth him believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, which believed they were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues, and magnify God. Then, then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, 
that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to carry certain days. And the apostles and brethren were also in Judea, heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. When Peter came to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him, saying, Thou wentest in two men uncircumcised, and dost eat with them. So Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning, and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, a certain vessel descend, as it had been a great sheep, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even unto me, upon the which, when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay, and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from on heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already come into the house where I was, sent, some, sent from Caesarea unto me, and the Spirit bade me to go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell these words, whereby thou and all of thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as, us on, as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he had said, John indeed baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the, the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I, that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose out about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were to come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed, and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch. Who, when he came, had seen them, the grace of God was glad, and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they would believe unto the Lord. And he was a good man, full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people were added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church, and they taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem into Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar, that the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to rest certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword, and because he saw who the Jews who proceeded by their wicked Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him for foster millions of soldiers to keep him. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. 
And who in here would have rushed into our the same night theater was sleeping to swing because two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did, and he said to him, Cast thy garments about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he, he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second court, they came unto the iron gate, and leaders unto the city, which opened them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through the next street, and forth with the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know with a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brother. And he he departed and went into another place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and their abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them and of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him and having made Blastus the king Chamberlain, their friend desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country, and upon it set they Herod arrived, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an orientation unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god, and not a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because the grave not because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied, and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry, and took him took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Now the Lord in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, and prophets, 
Nicolaian, the recognizer, and Lucius of Turing and Union, which had been brought up in Paris, this I plug and saw as a minister to the Lord and fasted for the Holy Ghost that separate me by events and saw for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they have feasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed into, unto Celestia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also drawn to their minister. And when they had gone through the islands of Baptist, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul, and desired to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, bestowed his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and said, O fool of all society and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to perverse the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and she went about seeking him to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy when he saw that what was done, the least being astonished at the doctor of the Lord. Now when Paul and his company loose from Bathos, they came to Berga in Pamphylia, and John departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from her, Berga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel, shows our fathers and exalted the people, when he dwelt with strangers in the land of Egypt, and with a high on cross, he then out of it. And about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness, and when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of four hundred and fifty years, until Samuel the prophets, and afterwards they died of him. And God gave unto them the soul of the son of Kish, and the man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God according to his promise. Praise unto Israel, Savior Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Who be ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of the streets I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you fear of God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem, and their rulers, because they knew him not, will make the voices of the prophets.
is broken, and that we have grace that we this again, as it is all to your sins that is song, thou art my son, this day have I regards in thee, and as concerning that we raise him up from the dead, now, no, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David, Wherefore he saved God's servant and I his own. Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David art to be a servant to his own generation by the will of God, that were honestly, and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption, as he whom God raised again is God of corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all this believe are justified from all things, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware therefore lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold ye despisers and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out to the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that the, these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, and speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day, they almost the whole city together, to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy, and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, when contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of, you, of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it upon you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, well, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to their eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women. And the chief men of the city embraced persecution against Paul and Barnabas. And they expelled them out of their coats, but they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. And they came and passed in Iconium, but they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake the great multitude of both the Jews and also of the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. The men who might evil afflicted against the brethren. <coughs> For long time, therefore, both they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when the when the women was all made, both of the Gentiles and also the Jews, with their rulers, he used them despitefully and disowned them. <coughs> they were aware of it, and they fled unto Lystra and Derby, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lies round about. And there they preached the gospel. <coughs> there said there said a certain man of Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who said, Pastor, behold him, perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, The gods are come down to those in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker, then the high priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, <coughs> for oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice to the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they rent their clothes, and ran among the people, crying out, 
in saying, Sirs, why do why do ye these why do ye these things? We are also men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not his, he left not himself without witness, and in that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven in fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these things, ears restrained they the people, but they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came to their certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium. He persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, suppose, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples. They exhorted them to continue in the faith, and that we must, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church, they had prayed with fasting. They commended to the, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Adelia. And then sailed to Antioch, and once they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work for which they fulfilled. And when they were come, they gathered the church together to rehearse all that God had done with them, and how he opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. <coughs> from there they abode a long time with the disciples, and certain men came down from Judea, and certain men which came down from Judea called the brethren. And said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem of the apostles and elders about this question, and being brought on their way by and being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria. Declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received with the church and of all the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up a certain sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to, to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye you know that it, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by their mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bearing them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost. Even as he did unto us, and they put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God the first did visit the Gentiles to take them out of the people in his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return, and I will build again the tabernacle of David, 
which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles, upon whom name is called, said the Lord, who dost know all these things, known to God are the works from the beginning of the world, wherefore my sentence is, that we trouble not men, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day, then pleased at the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas surnamed Barnabas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren sent greetings unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Syria. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, You must be circumcised and keep the law to whom you gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than those necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall be well, fare ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for their consolation, and Judas and Silas, being prophets, also themselves exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after that, they had tarried there in space, that they were let go in peace from the brethren of the apostles, notwithstanding it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. And some days later, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them. He departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder from one to the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. <coughs> Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Sicilia, confirming the churches. Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there in Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed by the spot of the Greek, which was well reported of them by the brethren that they were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in the quarters. For they knew all that his father was a Greek. And when they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for the, to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders, which were at Jerusalem. And so the church was established in the faith and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone throughout the Phygria and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden in the Holy Ghost to preach the word of Asia. 
after they were come to Lycia, they decide to go to Barthenia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passing by Mysia came down to Troas, and the vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. After, and after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go to Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, losing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in the city abiding certain days, and on the Sabbath we were out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made. We sat down and spake unto the woman which resorted thither, and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Theretia, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul, and she was baptized in her household, and she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, Come into my house and abide there, and she constrained us. And it came to pass that as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by sweet saying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto the way of salvation. And this she did many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of the Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers, and brought them to the brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men being Jews do receive you trouble in our city. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them in prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's hands were loosened. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trampling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to, the, and to all that were in the house. And he took them in the same hour of the night, and washed his stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeant, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told the same to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you go, now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us open uncommanded, being Romans, and having cast us in prison. And now do they thrust us out privily? Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates. And they feared, 
when they heard of the Romans, and they came and besought them, and brought them out, and desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison, and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them, and departed. When they passed through Amphipolite, the state of Thessalonica, the synagogue, where was the synagogue of the Jews? And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and preached out of faith, reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and pledging that Christ must need to suffer and risen again from the dead, that this Jesus who might preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed, consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, but not a few. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with them, they took unto them certain Jewish fellows of the favored sort, and gathered the company, and set all the city on the floor, and sought to the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them out, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received. And these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason the, and of the others, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night into Beroea, who, coming thither, went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all the readiness of mind, searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men not a few. But then the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Beroea. They came thither also and stirred up the people, and then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go, as it were, to the sea. But Silas and Timothy abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens and received the command meant unto Silas and Timothy, for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him, when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue of the Jews, and the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him, and certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the, of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, he seemeth to be a setter, setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is, for thou bringest certain things, certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, that these things mean for all the Athenians and strangers which were there and spent their time nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Martel and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made of hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath in all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far away every 
one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of the poets have said, for we are also his offspring, for as much as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device, <coughs> and the times of this ignorance, God was that but now commanded all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world of righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, He will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men played unto him, and believed, among which was Dionysus, an heir target, a woman, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And that Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads, I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined part to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many other Corinthians, hearing believed, and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And when Galileo was the deputy of and the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Galileo had said to the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, re Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. Grave them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. Now Leo cared for none of these things. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head, and sent Pene, for he had a for he had a vow, and he came to Ephesus, and left them there, and he himself entered into the synagogue, and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer time with him, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again to you, if God will. And he sailed from, from Ephesus. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them, and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed through grace, for he mightily convinced the Jews that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ, 
and came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Since ye believed, and they said unto him, We have not so, not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And he said, And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and stayed boldly for the space of three months, disputing, persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers, divers were hardened and were believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated disciples, disputing daily in the school of the Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one, Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which were curious, which used curious hearts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the pieces of price of them and found it fifty thousand pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. After these things were ended, Paul proposed in the Spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying. After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he went into Macedonia, two of them that ministered unto him, Timothy and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And at the same time there arose no small stir about that way, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be, they be no gods, which are made with hands, so that not only this craft is, is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed from all Asia and the world worship her. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the feet of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered unto the people, the disciples suffered him not, and certain of the chief chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with his hand, and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, The men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, you ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly, for you have brought hither these men, 
which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which were with him have a, have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies, let them, be in, in, let them implead one another, that if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he is thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. And after the uproar to cease, Paul called unto him the disciples, and embraced them, and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when he had gone into those parts, and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece, and there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him, and he was about to sail into Syria, he purported to return to Macedonia, and there accompanied him into Asia, Sopatar of Baroa, and the, of the, Thessalo, the Thessalonians, Eratocus and Sidonthus and Gaius of Derby, and Timothy and of Asia, Dicus and Troenus. And he's going before tarried before us, Troas, and we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came into them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber, and where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with the sleep, and fell down from the third loft, and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him, and embracing him, said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, and he had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comforted. And we went before to ship, and sailed into Assos, and intended to take in Paul. For so had he appointed, minding himself to go afoot. And when he met with us at Assos, we took him in, and came into the middle of the knee. And we sailed thence and came to the next day over Chios, and the next day we arrived at Samos and Terre at Triglonium, and the next day we came to Miletus, for Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem in the day of Pentecost. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus, and he called the elders of the church, and when they had come to him, he said unto them, Ye you know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying and wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, and have showed you, and have taught you publicly, and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God, and the faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Say that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that the bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of grace of God. And now behold, I know that all ye call among whom I have done preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of all your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I command you with God, and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. 
I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, you yourselves know that these things, that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have shown you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. And it came to pass that after they were gone from them and were launched, we came with a straight course unto Kos, and the day following into Rhodes, and from thence unto Patera. And finding a ship sailing over into Phoenicia, we went abroad and set forth. Now when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the le we left it on the left hand and sailed into Syria, and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was unlaid for burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. And when we had accompanied those and when we had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way, and they all brought us on our way with wives and children. So we were out of the city, and we kneeled down on shore and prayed. And when we had taken our leave one of another, we took ship, and they returned home again. And when we had finished our course from Tyre, we came to Plotinus and saluted the brethren, and abode with them one day. And the next day, we, and the next day we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And on the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he had come unto us, he took Paul's girdle, and bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so, so shall the Jews of Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when he heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And he, he would not be persuaded, he ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. And after those days, we took up our carriages, and we went to Jerusalem. There went with us also a certain of the disciples of Caesarea, and brought with them one Manasseh of Cyprus, an old disciple with whom we should lodge. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us into James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly, what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord, and they said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. And when they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after their customs, what is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this, that which we say to thee, we have four men which we have a vow on them. Take them and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things wherefore they were informed concerning me are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law, as touching the Gentiles which believe we have written and concluded that they observe no such things, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. Then Paul took the men, and the next day purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification, until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid their hands on him, crying out, men of Israel, help, this is the man that teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law. This is that place, and further brought Greeks also into the temple, and have polluted this holy place. 
For they had seen before with him in the city of Trophimus and Ephesians, and they supposed that Paul had brought him to the temple. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together. And they said, Paul and Judah came out of the temple, and forth with the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came up to the chief captain of the band, which all Jerusalem was in an uproar. And immediately took soldiers and centurions, and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating with Paul. Then the chief captain came near, and took him, and commanded him to be bound with two chains, and demanded who he was, and what he had done, and some cried one thing, some another among the multitude. And when he could not know the certainty of the tongue, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he had come and came upon the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. And the multitude of people followed after crying, away with him. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee, who said, and stop speak Greek? Hast not thou that Egyptian which before these days made it an Ephor, and led and led us out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which am I, which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of the Armenian city. And I beseech you, suffer me to speak unto the people. And we, he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs, and beckoned with the hand upon the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard this, he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence as he saith, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, the city of Cilicia. He has brought up in the city at the feet of Gamaliel, and has taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous with God, as ye all are this day. And I persecuted this fire unto the death, finding and delivering into prison for men and women, as also the high priest that bear me witness, and all the states of Nazareth, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus, to bring them which were there bound into, unto Jerusalem for to be punished. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were there with me saw him take the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go unto Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of thy sight, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus, and one and yet as a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood, and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him, and he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now, why tarriest thou, rise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord? And it came to pass that when I was come home, come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, and saw 
that void they know, that I can pretend and be to never think of them that believes in me. And when the blood of thy martyrs even was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death, and kept the remains of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto the firstborn, and them lifted up their voices, and said, Away with such a fellow from here, for it is not fit that he should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes, and threw dust into the air, the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle, and bade that he should be examined by certain, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Say, Keith, what thou doest for this man is a Roman? Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, For the great sum of some obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was freeborn, then straightway they departed from it him which should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid, after he knew that she was a Roman, and because he had found him. And the morrow, because he would have known certain she were for the Jews of the Jews, he loosened her from his lands and commanded the chief priests and all their council to appear, and brought Paul down and set him before them. And Paul earnestly beholding the council said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then Paul said unto him, God shall smite thee, thou wipe it off the wall. So sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. And they stood by by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wish not, brethren, if you were the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men, brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. And we had, when he had said so, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the multitude was divided, for the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. <clears throat> and there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part of the and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel hath spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, hearing that Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and found themselves on their course, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they killed Paul. And there were more than forty which had made this conspiracy. And they came to the chief priests and the elders and said, We have found ourselves under a great curse, and we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now therefore ye, that the council signifies to the chief captain that he bring him down to you tomorrow, as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him, and we, wherever he come near, are ready to kill him. And when Paul's sister and son heard of their lying wait, he went and entered into the castle and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions among him and said, Bring this young man to the chief captain, for he has a certain thing to tell him. 
So he took him, brought him to the chief captain, and said, Call the prisoner, call the neighbor him, and pray to me to bring this young man unto thee, who has something to say unto thee. So the chief captain took him by the hand, and went with him aside privately, and asked him, What is that thou hast to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee, if thou wouldst bring down and tell tomorrow to the council, as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. But do not thou yield unto them, for there lie and wait for him of them more than forty men, which have bound themselves with the nose, that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now they are ready, looking for a promise from me. So the chief captain then let the young man depart and charged him, See thou, tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen three score, and ten, and spear them two hundred at the third hour of the night, and provide them beasts that they may set all on, and bring them to the for the Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter after this manner, Claudius Lysias, unto the most Excellent Governor Felix said of greeting, This man was taken of Jews that should have been killed of them. Then I came with an army and rescued him, having understood the fear of the Romans, and when I would have known the cause before they accused him, I brought him forth into their council, whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of the death of the one. And when it was told me how that the Jews laid wait for the man, I went and sent straight away to thee and gave commandment to his accuser also to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. Then the soldiers, as it was commanded them, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. On the morrow they left the horsemen to go with him and returned to the castle, who, when they came to Caesarea, and delivered the epistle to the governor, and presented Paul also before him. And when the governor had read the letter, he asked what province he was. And when he understood that he was a Cilicia, I will hear thee, said he, when thy accusers are also come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. And after five days, Ananias, the high priest, descended with the other. And with a certain orator named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul, and when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by providence, we accept that always and in all places the most noble Felix of all thankfulness, notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee. I pray thee that thou wouldst hear us of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man, pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also hath gone about to profane the temple, whom we took and would have judged according to our law, but the chief captain, Lysias, came upon us, and with a great violence shook him out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come unto thee, by examining of whom thyself and I take knowledge of all these things, whereof we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. Then Paul, after that, that the governor beckoned unto him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been as many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship. The neighbor found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues or in the city, neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. But this I confess thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God 
my father, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both the just and unjust. And herein I do I exercise myself, and have always a constant void of defense toward God and toward men. Now after many years I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings, whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, and I there was multitude nor with tumult, who ought to have been here before the and object if they had ought against me, or else let these same here say if they had found any evil doing in me, while I stood before the council, except in the for this one voice, that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead. I am called and questioned by you this day, and when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, When Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know that uttermost of your matter. Then he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty, that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Priscilla, which was also a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way, for this time, when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might lose him. Wherefore he sent for him a bit often, and communed with him. But after two years, Perseus Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul down. Now when Festus was come into the province, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul and besought him and desired favor against him, that he would send for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to kill him. But Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea, and that he himself would depart shortly thither. Let them therefore, said he, which among you are able to go down with me and accuse this man, if there be any wickedness in him. And when he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down into Caesarea, and the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, commanded Paul to be brought. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about, and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove, while he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, and neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar I have offended anything at all. But Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul and said, Wilt thou go up to Jerusalem, and there be judged of these things before me? Then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged. To the Jews have I done no wrong, as thou very well knowest. For if I be an offender, or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things, wherefore these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, As thou appeal unto Caesar, unto Caesar shalt thou go. And after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came into Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him, to whom I answered, It is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die before that which is accused to have the accusers face to face and to have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. Therefore, when they were come hither without any delay on the morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth, against whom, when the accuser stood up, they brought none accusation of such things as I supposed, but had certain questions against him of their own superstition, and of one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged for these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, 
I would also hear the man myself tomorrow, said he, thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice with the great pomp, was entered into the place of his hearing, with the chief captains, the principal men of the city, had Festus the man that Paul was brought forth. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all the men which are here present with us, ye see this man about whom all the multitude of Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto him, my Lord. Wherefore I have brought him forth before you, and, and especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had I might have something to write. For it seemeth to me unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not without, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion I lived a Pharisee, and now I stand and judge for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews, why should it be thought a thing incredible to you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought of it with myself, for there ought to be many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them, and I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and of Jerusalem, and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me, Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spoke for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in the corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would, I would to God that not only thou, but also that all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up and the governor and Bernice, and then they sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, 
This man doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. And when it, it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and a certain other prisoner unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band, and entering into a ship of, of Adrantium, he launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go into his friends to refresh himself. And when he had launched from thence, he sailed under Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. And when he had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. And there the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing to Italy, and he put us therein. And when he had sailed slowly many days, when he had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Snidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete, over against Salome, and hardly passing it, came into a place which is called the Fair Havens, nigh, nigh whereunto was the city of Lasse, Lasea. Now when much time was spent, when sailing was now dangerous because of the past, because the past was now already past, Paul admonished them, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading of the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenix and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete, and lieth toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close to Crete. But not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurolisiadon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear it up into the wind, we let her dry. And running under a certain island, which is called Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, struck sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out our own hands, the, ta the hands, the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no salt tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. And after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed me from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given me all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit, we must be cast upon a certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, and we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the ship men deemed that they draw near to some country, and sounded and found it twenty fathoms, and when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern, and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, and they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they had been cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, he cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat, and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them, Paul to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore I pray to you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread, and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. <laughs> then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were all in the same 
when we were old in the ship, 200, we score and 16 souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into which they were minded, if at all possible, to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves into the sea, and loosed the rudder bands, and hoistened up the mainsail to the wind, and made towards shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the fore part struck fast, and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose, and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea, and get to land, and the rest some on boards, and some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe land. And they were escaped, and they knew that the island was called Melita, and the barber, Fair place people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when the, when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have sworn or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father, Publius, lay sick of a fever, and then a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in, and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed, who also honored with many honors, and when we departed and related us with such things as were necessary, then after three months we departed in a ship, a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. And landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. Then from thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium. And after one day the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Puteoli, where we found brethren and were desired to carry within seven days, and so we went toward Rome. And from thence, we, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Apiforum and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. So when he came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with the soldier that kept him. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together, and when they were come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to, to appeal it unto Caesar, not that I ought to excuse my nation of uh, with this cause, therefore, I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee, but we desire to hear thee what thou thinkest for us concerning this sect. We know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading the most concerning Jesus, both, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. 
and some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word, well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet and to our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed, and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two full years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those which concern the Lord Jesus Christ, with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to thee. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of the ages. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, who gave his life for us on the cross for the salvation of the world, is the prayers of his most blessed mother, the Lord, glorious and all of apostles, the holy and righteous ancestors of God, your human and of all the saints. Have mercy on us and save us for his good and loves and cry. Amen.
Thank you. 